Your skepticism has reached record high levels. But what are the primary causes for the increase? And do your skeptics pose a risk to further integration of Europe? Alf Vanax, director of Baltic International Center for Economic Policy Studies, talks today to Dukoscopy TV to discuss the matter. Well, thank you very much for seeing us once again. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. Last time when we spoke, we discussed the development of the Euro Monetary Union. And mm -hmm. I remember you highlighted that your skepticism is a critical issue. So I wanted to elaborate a little bit further on that. Okay. So the first question I wanted to address, well, the European Union was initially established as a peace treaty following World War II to ensure a safe and stable region. However, do you believe that all further attempts to integrate Europe actually led to more problems and increase in your skepticism than actually achieve its primary purpose? Well, I'm not sure the primary purpose of the European Union is, uh, is a peace treaty now. I mean, of course, one of the aims was to stop France and Germany from uh, going to war again, which they'd done regularly for about a century before that. And it's, of course, succeeded in that. But, of course, other things have happened since then. So they, basically the collapse of the, of the socialism, communism in Eastern uh, Europe that led to a completely new wave of um, EU expansion uh, and led to a completely different uh, European Union. I don't think that the expansion really has much to do with the, with the growth of uh, Euroscepticism, except in one specific area, and that is that the free movement of labor, which is part of the European Union, has opened, after a transition period, the borders of Western countries like Britain and uh, France and other countries to Central and Eastern Europeans, and in particular to people like uh, Roma, who are not very welcome in these um, Western countries. And that the general immigration that has followed the open borders and the specific immigration from certain parts of Central and Eastern European communities, I think, have contributed to the growth of kind of anti-European uh, attitudes in some countries. But we also see the development of uh, your skeptic political parties. And according to President of Foundation for European Progressive Studies, Eurosceptic parties might actually win in the upcoming European elections. Well, that might well be so. Uh, it's, 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 we, what we have here is a very interesting phenomenon that you have, first of all, that Eurosceptic parties uh, are very keen to get into the European Parliament. Yeah? It's a little bit of a contradiction. And secondly, that um, they have stronger representation there than they have often in their national parliaments. So if you take the, the leading sort of British Eurosceptic party, UKIP, um, it's well represented in, uh, in Brussels, in the, in, the, in the Brussels parliament. Uh, and its leader is a kind of star in that parliament, yeah? Uh, but um, they don't have a single seat in the, in the British parliament. If we talk a little bit further about Britain, we actually mentioned last time that it's going to carry out a referendum to yeah. exit the European Union. So what, to your mind, is the likely outcome of this referendum and what are the impacts, potential impacts, on the UK's economy? I think the, uh, the current government, and indeed any government, I think there's a commitment to have it before the next um, election. Uh, I don't think the government wants to have such a referendum, right? But it's ha it's been kind of forced into that sort of um, that sort of position. Uh, the referendums are very uh, interesting sort of political phenomena because the outcome depends very crucially on the question that you ask. I'm quite sure that they will put the question in such a way that uh, that will maximise the likelihood of getting a vote for staying in. I, I do not believe anybody in a serious position in British politics really wants Britain out. I think it would, it would create uh, huge problems. And of course, remember, we've, uh, Britain has already had one referendum on exiting the uh, European Union. That was in 1975, right? They, they joined and then there was a referendum 
So, you know, they agreed to stay in then, the British people voted to stay in then. I would suspect they would anyway, but the problem is a referendum, I think, would be a very awkward and politically distracting thing in British politics. And uh, if there happened to be a vote for, uh, for going out, I think it, all hell would break loose. So what about then maybe other countries? If it's definitely not in the interest of Britain, do you think it's likely that perhaps even if there's another referendum, other countries could follow its example and carry out a vote of well, its well, own? Well, they could do, you know, but I think, I, I, although I'm a critic, I'm quite a big critic of the European Union, I don't want to see it uh, break up. And uh, to have a lot of referendum, referendums or referenda, I don't know how to say that, uh, on exiting the whole union, I think, is um, would be a destabilizing uh, sort of phenomenon. And the last question I wanted to address, when we also had our discussion last time, you have mentioned that Europe should tackle the problem of your skepticism with real actions rather than propaganda. So what, to your mind, then, should those actions, in fact, be? Europe is constrained by the political will of the, of the member states, right? But nevertheless, the European Commission has a, a kind of life and momentum of its own. And in my opinion, that over the recent years, they've engaged in, I would call it sort of propaganda, you know, things like smart regulation, smart growth, sort of the Euro 2020 targets. When we get to 2020, we'll find that we haven't reached them and so on. So the Commission seems to me to be on a path where it's trying to uh, promote without always real justification, the benefits of the union, what they're actually doing. So for, you know, the kind of thing that is really, really uh, important is there's huge inequality in Europe across countries and um, within countries. So Latvia, for example, where we're talking right now, actually has the most unequal distribution of income in the whole of the European Union. That's not a headline thing, really, in the, uh, in, the, in the Commission. OK, it's come, they've made some recommendations about it, but it's not, the, it's not their top priority. So I think they should focus on real things, on things that matter to people, and less on the propaganda, and maybe less on some of the bureaucratic things like um, I don't know, the, some of their rules about how you call things and uh, of course they're there to protect, you know, you can't call something cognac if it doesn't come from, from cognac, right, and so on. Well, that's, in a way, it's fair enough, but it, people get the impression that this is what the European is, Union is about. It's about labels, about propaganda, it's about letting in um, a lot of uh, uh, immigrants that uh, take away local people's jobs and so on. Well, it's not only about that. So it should actually do more things for real people rather than just advertise what it thinks it is a good thing to advertise. Okay, well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. You're welcome. <laughs> That was Alf Vanax, director of Baltic International Center for Economic Policy Studies, who discussed the issue of Euroscepticism and what are the primary risks it presents for Europe. Stay tuned with Dukoscopy TV for more exclusive interviews.